Hi everyone, my name is Wilson and today I'll be talking about a paper learning to manipulate deformable objects without demonstrations. So to get started, why deformable objects? Well, deformable objects play a very crucial role in our lives. We interact with them all the time, such as folding laundry, tying our shoes, or even bagging groceries. However, a lot of recent work in robotics has focused around rigid manipulation and rigid objects. So for example, on the left here, we have grasping objects and clutter, and on the right, we have dexterous in-hand manipulation of a Rubik's Cube. However, there still is a pretty rich history in the area of deformable object manipulation. Uh, so we have a few works here on the left, and on the right here we have an animation of a work in 2010 where the author was able to do a pretty cool thing, in that they were able to get a robot to successfully uh, pick up and fold laundry. However, if you look under the hood, you'll see that the method is fairly complicated. There's a lot of moving parts and stuff needs to work very right in order to succeed. So this may bring up a lot of issues, such as um, issues in robustness or failure to generalize to either maybe new types of cloth or new colors of cloth. So in order to solve the problem of robustness and generalization, our paper seeks to solve the problem of deformable object manipulation using deep reinforcement learning. To be precise, we learn a policy pi that takes in an image and outputs pick place actions. We apply the action on the current frame and then repeatedly apply it until we eventually reach our goal configuration. In this case, we're trying to spread out the cloth. So a logical choice of architecture for the policy would be an autoregressive structure, where we have a pick policy that outputs a pick point, and then a conditional place policy that outputs the place point condition on the pick point. However, jointly optimizing these two policies using standard RL can introduce a few key challenges. The first is the chicken and egg problem. So at initialization, both policies are bad. However, if you need to learn a good place policy, you need good pick points, and vice versa. This can result in mode collapse, or you can have bad exploration due to noisy learning. The second issue is credit assignment. So if the agent fails, what went wrong? Was it a bad pick place, was it a bad place point, or was it both? It's unclear. So in order to address this problem, our paper proposes a solution where we optimize both policies separately. So first, we train a conditional place policy using uniformly random pick to ensure coverage. To do this, we use an off-policy algorithm called soft after critic. Next, at test time to execute the pick point, we use a one-step look ahead, our method MVP, where we maximize the value function in order to select the best pick point. And here are some examples of using our learned agent in a Mujico 2.0 environment. So here we show the learning curves of our method compared against the baselines. Our two main baselines were basically joint optimizations of the pick and place policies under different factorizations. So the green independent assumes pick and place are independent, and blue conditional assumes an autoregressive structure. So as you can see, our method of separately optimizing the pick and place policies vastly outperforms our baselines, and is much more sample efficient. And in order to transfer to a real robot, we use sim to real transfer and domain randomization. We randomize physics, um, such as friction, damping, inertia, mass, and also visual attributes, such as lighting and cloth textures. So on the right here, we have some examples, and we have some results showing that we received much more benefit from visual domain randomization as opposed to physics domain randomization. And here's a trial of a rope spread experiment. It's significantly sped up for the sake of time. A real trial would take about five to 10 minutes. And here are some examples of other trajectories, all using the same policy, but given different start states. And here is a cloth spreading trial. These ones typically take significantly longer, about 20 to 30 minutes, as opposed to five to 10 minutes for the rope, but understandably since it's much more complicated than the rope. But eventually the robot does successfully spread it out. And here are some other example trajectories. Note that we train the same policy with different cloth textures, um, so it's able to generalize across varying colors of cloths, as well as different start states. And here are the real robot experiment results. Um, so in summary, um, the evaluation metric that we used was the rope and cloth spread coverage across different runs, um, comparing different methods. And as you can see, our method vastly outperforms our baselines. Thanks for watching.